Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-Minus 365. Today's episode, I'm going to be showing you five key MFA features within the Azure AD portal that you likely don't know about. And in this episode, I'm going to be going through each individual feature, why it matters from a security perspective. And additionally, I'll link a blog post down below, which will show you step-by-step -step instructions for either turning these settings on or accessing certain reports that I'll be showing you today as well. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so the first setting I'm showing you here is called number matching and it's used with the Microsoft Authenticator app. This is a feature that just recently came out of preview and actually Microsoft's gonna be making this a default feature here in the coming months. But essentially the user gets prompted with this notification of a number here that they then have to type in on the Authenticator app in order to approve the MFA request. Now, this might not seem too different compared to the MFA push on the Authenticator app, but it's actually a big deal when we look at common attacks today like MFA fatigue. MFA fatigue is the attack method where the bad actor has compromised credentials to the user account and attempts to overload the user with MFA prompts. They can actually approve that pretty easily and we saw that recently with the uber breach so this is something where the user actually has to type in the number again so it's very much a less likely use case that they'll get those mfa prompts and know exactly what to type in to actually approve that request so this security setting along with the next one i'm going to show you is in here in the azure active directory portal under the security section and under the authentication methods here you can see how we have our authentication methods listed. You can click into Microsoft Authenticator and then you can go to the configure section and you have these three settings here. And the first one I mentioned to you here again is push notifications for number matching. And these will most likely for you be set to Microsoft Manage, but you can change them to enabled as well too. They're Microsoft Manage. It means that if Microsoft decides that this is gonna be default, that change will happen across all of your users. So I recommend getting ahead of that before they actually make that change to give some people a heads up just in case the end users have a struggle with that, which most likely they will in a lot of cases. So the next feature I'm going to show you here today is the show geographic location in push and passwordless notifications along with the application name. I'm just kind of combining these two because they can both be enabled obviously at the same time along with the number matching. As you can see that up here on my screen now where it actually shows the location of the user and where that request is coming from when they're actually typing in that number for number matching as well, just for additional security and giving them some awareness that, hey, this is actually me signing in. So it's another user-friendly feature, in my opinion, just to have that so they don't have these inadvertent requests coming from locations that they're not at currently. So the next setting I'm gonna show you here is called authentication strengths, and it's basically a phishing resistant MFA method here that's coupled within a conditional access policy. So if you click under the grant section, you'll now see this require authentication strength in preview, and they have a predefined set of policies here that you can modify or create your own as far as net new, which I'll show you here in a minute. But basically this allows you to have additional security for maybe more sensitive resources within the organization or maybe even want to make this the default if it's an organization or customer that's getting attacked all the time with phishing attempts. But basically the phishing resistant multi-factor authentication requires stronger methods such as a FIDO2 key, Windows Hello for Business, or a certificate in order to grant access to resources where you may have other methods set up with conditional access policies to just require a strong method of authentication like the SMS text message, the MFA push to the authenticator app, something like that. But it's just giving you another layer of security here that you can configure. And you can do so by going under the security section here again, going under the authentication methods again, and then going under authentication strengths. So again, we have our three here that are boilerplate baked right into Azure AD out of the box. And then you can also go in, you can add new authentication strength and you can actually select which ones that you want as well too. And you can apply that to your conditional access policies. So I think this one's really cool as well too in case you wanna start enforcing FIDO2 keys, for instance, on really sensitive data or apps within the environment. The last two features I want to show you here are just reports within the Azure AD portal, but I think they're really powerful, can help out a lot from the MFA perspective. 
The first report here is the authentication user registration details page here, where you can actually see all users within the organization and you can see the default multi-factor authentication they use and all of the methods that they registered as well too. So some of them might be using a third party like Google Authenticator, some of them might be using the Authenticator app, some might just be using an email or SMS text. And ultimately you can take this information to potentially standardize the MFA that's used across the organization or investigation of support tickets going in and seeing what type of MFA they use today. If it's either MFA troubleshooting or if you're investigating a higher level incident where somebody has potentially been breached. Another thing you'll notice here is you can see whether or not the multi-factor authentication is capable, passwordless is capable, or self-service password reset is capable for users. You can use this really to audit the information within the tenant so that way you can help remediate any issues and make it compliant from the settings that you've enforced throughout the customer environment. The last report I want to show you here today is right underneath. It's called Registration and Reset Events. But this is a good report here that's really golden in the sense of investigating risky users within your environment. A common attack method for somebody who's compromised and gains access into a user account is to go in and actually register their own second factor in the Microsoft portal so that way they can approve these requests or get these requests for multi-factor sent to them so they can persist within the environment here. And so you can go in after you see a risky user that might be compromised and start here as far as investigation goes to see if there's any newly registered multi-factor authentication methods for the user and what method was used. So using this in combination of the user registration report, if you've standardized the details and methods that you're using for multi-factor, you could see potential anomalies here along with the registration being an anomaly in and of itself. So these are just two reports here to help out with the MFA investigation within an organization. Okay guys, that's everything that I wanted to showcase in today's video. Hope that was helpful and you got some new insights into some MFA settings you might not have known about within the Azure AD portal. If you guys have found some other settings that are helpful in managing your customer environments, feel free to comment those below along with any other questions or comments in general. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Thanks guys. Have a great day.